Let's get to our other big mover of this morning, and that is Netflix. It's coming for your wallet once again. The streaming giant is hiking its prices for both its basic plan and premium plan, now sitting at $11.99 and $22.99, respectively. The company did say that it saw a turnaround in subscribers in its earnings release last night, surging $8.8 million in the third quarter as its ad tier addition and password crackdown proved to be beneficial. Netflix also giving strong profitability metrics here with operating margin hitting 22.4% in the quarter. CFO Spencer Newman gave some context for the streaming giant's margin targets on the earnings call. Let's take a listen. There's no change in our financial objectives and also no change in our long-term margin expectations, including the fact that we see a, we don't think we're anywhere near a margin ceiling. We've got a long runway of, of margin growth. All right, for more on this, we want to bring in Brian Mulberry, Zach's Investment Management Client Portfolio Manager. And let's break down what we just heard from Spencer Newman there, because I think this was one of the, the bigger takeaway from the earnings call, just in terms of that runway growth that they see for margins. What do you think is realistic? And do you agree that you don't see Netflix anywhere near the ceiling when it comes to margins? Yeah, absolutely. When you're talking about sub subscriber growth, the way that they have accomplished it and being able to raise prices by almost 20 percent, that creates an enormous amount of revenue growth. We see revenue growth by about a billion dollars year over year from where we are today going into the same time period next year. So that's substantial. And so I think, yes, there's quite a bit of runway that's very positive in front of them. In the near term, you know, the challenge is going to be all these exciting numbers, lots of eyeballs watching. But where does the content come from? Does the strike in Hollywood uh, affect them in terms of their ability to continue on this type of a pathway? So obviously very exciting blowout numbers, no question about it. What we really want to see is making sure that they're, they're capitalizing on the great content that they had previously and that they can continue to produce that. Obviously, some very high quality content, getting a lot of awards and, and accolades and you know, making sure that the, that stream of, of content is catching up with the amount of excitement that we have in terms of new subscribers. Uh, and, and hopefully people are still willing to pay that new price as well. Yeah, Strike was one of the first things they brought up on the call, Brian. And, and to your point there, uh, even as they were recognizing, and Ted Sarandos, the co-chief and executive officer there, saying we're incredibly and totally committed to ending this strike, industry, communities, economy, all are hurting, so they need to get a deal done. But what does a done deal for the broader industry that they're talking about that's equitable to both sides, what do you believe that looks like? Well, I think, you know, what happened with the writers seemed to be pretty equitable in our view in that there's a little bit more of a, a longer life cycle for some of this in terms of their product, right? What they're writing, the creative content, it's living longer now that you can go back and restream it and watch it as many times as you want to. So it makes sense to have a structure out there that helps with their kind of trailing commission, if you will. The more views their content gets, the more they should make because that's that really makes sense to us. So something along the same lines of the same type of a structure for the actors would make sense. It seems like they've got a good roadmap going forward to accomplish that. And so we would expect a deal hopefully to be done sooner than later. Brian, when it comes to the future growth that we've been focusing on here, obviously the password crackdown and the ad tier, the introduction there of that new platform driving a lot of the growth that we saw this most recent quarter. But when it comes to future growth, where do you see that coming from outside of the fact that obviously if they spend a lot on content, have that critical content, unique content, that of course is going to keep people st staying with Netflix. Yeah, absolutely. I think the runway for them to grow is going to be outside of the U.S. Their international exposure, their foreign language commitment to content, you know, now they have subscribers from over 100 different countries. And, and really, that provides an enormous amount of uplift in terms of new subscribers outside of North America. I think that's very exciting for the company. And they, they really have spent a lot of time and effort creating that foreign language content in multiple languages, obviously geared toward multiple different audiences. And I think that's a really exciting place where Netflix could really enjoy a lot of growth more so than its competition at this point in time. Yeah, certainly. And I mean, they kind of gave some of that history, too, on the call, talking about investing heavily to launch global in 2016, taking a discipline, uh, discipline approach to kind of getting to and building profitability as they grew revenue. Um, but ultimately here for how this company is also going to tap into different types of streamers that are out there, even internationally. It also comes with this realization that maybe they do need to do more in sports. And we're going to have one of the first examples of that this quarter here. Where else do you expect them to continue to invest 
in live sports or in live types of content features that drive some of those international views? Well, I think it's a, a you know live sports is a nice hedge to you know maybe a protect a loss of content if the strike with the actors continues uh, for a long period of time. Obviously, you've got a lot of competition there to stream these events, and I do think it would make sense for Netflix to try and at least have some type of a product to offer in order to be competitive in that marketplace. But you guys mentioned it earlier, you know, they came from renting DVDs a long time ago, and they were able to invest organically and change their business model. And so we think that they're at a point now with this amount of revenue generation, they can do the same thing again, organically pivot to something that might be better producing in terms of margins and profitability down the road, but without having to over leverage their balance sheet. And then you guys have been talking about interest rates all morning long. That's a really important distinction in this point in time. If you're having to borrow or finance your future growth today, just like mortgage rates, it's two and a half times higher than where you were about two and a half to three years ago. And so that's a really important distinction for Netflix. And one of the reasons I think it's getting a lot of attention is that they now have enough free cash flow generating to make these types of bids and changes in product lineups in order to maintain their competitive edge in the peer group. Brian Mulberry, Zach's investment management client, portfolio manager. Great to have you here with us today to break down Netflix earnings. Look forward to checking back in in the future. Thank you so much.